Rider, by the way, Al. <laughs> now turn your Cart Rider hype off because it's time for the rematch. Look at Brennan's face in the background. Look how excited he is. What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. I missed it. But, uh, guys, last time TY pretty much shreked Young Shake. It wasn't even close. Yeah, hashtag shreked. Yeah, I mean, it was. 420. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see if he can get Oh Baby the triple. It was pretty much a 360 no scope. I mean, if we're if we're gonna call it on these terms, you know. Anyways, uh, shout out to Doritos, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, Ty <laughs> versus Young Shake here in the second time they play against each other. I I I gotta feel very strongly that we're gonna see another 2-0 here. But Young Shake is coming off of some nice confidence. He he did very well himself against Solky in a completely yeah. different matchup. I was distracted by your Doritos joke, but did Catalina get through there? Oh, you know what? Actually, I don't think so, but... I think it was KSS, Catalina, and Nimbus. Unless I was seeing wrong. Maybe it was Foxtrot Labs. Now, you know, I just assumed the maps, the map bands would be the same. I didn't even think about that. Well, well King Sage was going to be the first here, map, I guess. so that's <laughs> a bit different, but... We'll, we'll see as we go into game, uh, game number two here. Uh, regardless, though, I mean, I do not think we're going to see double Stargate Phoenix. That much I am very no. confident about. Uh, I am as well. If I'm TY, I'm going to be thinking, all right, just stick to the plan, do my harassment, win in the late game. Done it before. All right, TY versus Young Shik, the rematch to find out who's going to the round of eight. Up here on the top left in the red, the Terran player. He's T.Y. And, of course, his opponent in the blue. On the bottom right. That makes it. It's Myungshik. Had a tough time the last time they fought. He's looking to turn it around this time. I feel like Myungshik, he, he really just has to calm himself down. He has to play more standard. No more, you know, tricky Phoenix Colossi compositions. Just go basic. You know, I, I know he tried to do that in game number one of the first series, and it didn't really turn out too well. Uh, you know, he was messing up his probe rallies. He definitely looked a lot nervous. But after taking two sets in a row against a guy like Solky, I think you have to have a bit of confidence back here. I think we'll see myung play a little bit better. I'd still give it to TY in this one, but um, I feel like we'll see a less nervous myung here. I think so, too. Beating Solky like that is going to give you a lot of confidence, I feel. Especially that game two, where he just dismantled him. Uh, he just knew just what to do in all in all circumstances. Yeah, that was, was literally like a dismantlement. He like took apart his army one by one. <laughs> and in game one, he just made a very uh, quick reaction, a quick adjustment to the build that Sulky chose. Defended really well, took like no losses, defended those lings, and then he was like, "All right, I know what, I know what your weaknesses are here. I'm gonna poke at you," and. Uh, you know, the poke actually, you know, popped the water balloon, man. That was that was all it was. That's all I needed. Yeah. Well, we got the barracks coming out here. And a gas, but it looks like it's going to be Reaper this time. I think. At least he's showing that now to the probe. Don't think he's going to cancel that and go factory. That would be pretty crazy. It would be pretty tricky, too. Yeah. Next level plays out of TY. I mean, that's the sort of thing where if you do that, you can trick your opponent, but you're going to lose a lot of marine production. And then you're going to be very vulnerable to, like, first stalker or something. It'll be very mind gamey, very meta, because nobody, like, sends a stalker across the map. But anyways, he's going to go ahead and get that Nexus up now. The SCD is being annoying. But not going to be able to eBay block this time. And waits just until 10 every time. That's the safest way to do it. By the way, for those of you guys at home, when it comes to drone harass, probe harass, anything, when you go to 10 hit points, that's when you leave. Because if you mess something up or there's a weird turn and you get another, your opponent gets another snipe on, or another swipe on you, then you've at least got that last uh, safety net of the extra 5 hit points you've got there to survive with your worker. Yeah, it's just not worth it to be that risky with your scouting unit there. It's just better to get it back home and mining. Keep it alive. It matters in the early game, you know? You want to keep it alive, get it mining. Yeah. Think of, like, 20 workers. That's 5% of your mining in that one worker. Yeah. It's pretty significant. Every worker counts. 
And the thing about workers, too, is people... It, uh, what I would love to see, and I've been saying this for years, I hope Blizzard is listening, um, <laughs> is a resources mind tab for the whole game. Because the worker count and income tab doesn't really tell you as much as... as uh, as you would like to know oftentimes, because worker counts matter for certain periods of time in the game. Yeah, it's better just that that kind of uh, tab, you know, would be just good to get a, a clear view of the entire game, how the, the resources went for the entire game for both players. The Reaper actually comes in this path. Should still be able to see the Twilight Council. Yeah, gets the scout here. It's not going to get out alive. Nice building placement there by Manchi. Yeah, and he's not going to be able to see whether a Dark Shrine goes down, Blink, or if there's like some weird cancel. But I think you can reasonably assume Blink. Might make a turret at the front of his ramp just to be safe. Might add, you know, that eBay for the Fast Plus One anyways. But Blink is what's on the table here. We'll see how much Myungshik wants to commit to this. Obviously, it's not a Blink all-in. Yeah. Could be just a little bit of Blink poking, like kind of that Fane build where he takes a third base behind it while the Terran's playing a little bit scared, a little bit defensive. There's so many ways to Blink on this map. Yeah, decent way to get control of the, the mid game here. It, it definitely takes a little bit of power away from this early push as well. You get an extra gateway, you get extra Stalkers out here. It should be able to hold it off just fine. So, Robo comes up, and that's, that's a pretty good sign that we're just going to see... Uh, a little bit of Blink poking. Blink useful later on, obviously, to deter drops. There's that eBay coming down. Grants all sorts of safety, plus the ability to get the research for the upgrades. He's chrono boosted this Blink a little bit, so he's going to have it out pretty quick. That's a funny scan. He just sees the uh, unit comp a little bit, but that's about it. Yeah, he's actually hiding these units uh, way over to the left. Not sure if he's trying to deny like an early third base. Like maybe he's read Myungsik and he's like, okay. Well, I'm not sure. You know, at the same time, he's putting a bunker back home at his own base. Here's what I'm thinking. Um, what I think is he's thinking that the Blink Stalker is going to move out and poke a little bit, but he knows it's not a really serious commitment. And as soon as that happens, he's he's hoping that the Mothership Core is going to be with them. If the Mothership Core is with them, he can force them to recall back with this, or he can just start fighting while the Mothership Core is away. Because the Mothership Core is away, he should be able to Nexus Cannon this and have no problem. Uh, but he's got plenty of units at home to defend, because he knows this is just a feign, this is just a, a pressure build. Also, on top of that, the possibility of a super greedy Nexus coming up with his Blink Feign is quite high, so he could even be able to come over here and, and snipe that too if that were happening. He's going to get some probe kills, the Mothership Core is a little bit out of position, it's on top of the ramp, there's the cannon. And he force fields here. There's a time warp as well. He's going to lose a sentry. He's trying to get up the ramp here. He's taking a lot of losses in the meantime. He keeps only three units alive. He's going to get another probe over here. This is the best he could have hoped for, really, getting into that ramp. But was it worth it? Uh, I think it was okay. Eight kills, eight probe kills. Got a sentry, too. Used that Mothership Core's energy. Almost sniped the Mothership Core. Oh, if he targeted one more time, he would have got that probe. But he was looking over here. Myungshik loving his... Uh, Blink Stalker pokes. We saw Hero do this a lot too. This is something that's basically at this point become standard in Korea is you are never going to turn tail and run with your Stalkers. You are always going to be killing one Marine, one Marine, one yep. Marine, one Marauder because it's a high skill cap unit. One of the highest in the game is Blink Stalkers. If you have the multitask and actually utilize those and not lose a Stalker here and there like we just saw Myung should do, it's always going to be worth it. Look at this. He's doing it again. Why not? It's super high skill cap, this unit. I love. It's one of the best units in StarCraft 2. We always expected it. As the game went on, we we're like, one day people are just going to do this all the time, and lo and behold, here we go. You know, uh, the Marine, actually, in a recent uh, Starhang show, was actually talking about how he feels the Stalkers are one of the highest skill cap units in the game, the one has the most micro potential. It's, it's really cool that finally this has just become the norm. Uh, players have gotten so good. We're living in, really, the golden age of StarCraft for for skill-wise. I mean, people have never been this good before, and I, I, I can't imagine they're going to get any worse. I think they're just going to get better and better. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're going to get worse, or at least I'd hope not. We we got two medevacs coming in here, uh, possibly trying to snipe some units, possibly just trying to drop in the main. No Nexus cannon available. So about 80 energy on that Mothership Core. He's got no cannons here either, and that tech is exposed. He's going to go for probes first. Now we can go ahead and get that Cyber Core. And he should get it, but at what cost? There's Blink on these Stalkers. He's going to Blink and immediately go for the Medivacs. Gets one. 
And in the end, was it worth it? He gets the Cybercore. But he's coming in here as well. Will be able to snipe these Zelts, it looks like. Well, the Zelts are going to run away. He's going to get an Assimilator. No, he doesn't <laughs> even get that, but... <laughs> concussive Shells wasn't done during that entire fight. That would have made things a little bit easier for him against those Zealots. Yeah. Just finished. This is just TY. This is what he loves to do in the mid-game against all Protosses. He just is just non-stop dropping you. He's at the front. He's at the back. He's at the side. He's got Widow Mines now. Really opens up a lot of options in terms of drops as well as team fighting in the middle of the map. He's just relentless. Yeah. Two SCVs sent to make one command center. That's just too many. It's the buddy system, man. He might make a turret over there. That's probably why he sent it. <laughs> I would guess. Probably. Might have just been a misclick. Oh. Wow, walks right into it. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Is that a Widow Mine drop? Probably so. Yeah. No third base coming up here from Young Seek. He's just way back in his base. This yeah, is what pressure does to you. He's super turtly right now. This time he's about to have range, though. He's playing very, very standard. That no sort of weird experimentation with Phoenixes or anything like that. And here come those Widow Mines, but he's got a Photon Cannon. Yeah. But still, as long as he can deny the third Nexus, he's getting his own third Command Center up. He doesn't have to overcommit to any of these drops. He's getting upgrades, too. Something that Myung Shik isn't doing super fast himself. His Forge is currently idle, in fact. And he made, did he make two, he made two Twilight Councils. Did he really? Yep. Maybe he made the second one out of fear that the first would be sniped because I think he probably should have targeted that instead of the cyber core on the main base. So maybe he just started it that way. But yeah, there's one at the back, and I saw, I saw another one. Uh oh. Nice. He gets Kick it. Off here. Yeah. And with like, the observers here, it's not going to do much. What? Like that was actually crazy that he was able to find and kill that so easily. The worker count for Ty has stayed really competitive this game. I mean, he's keeping it close. Okay, the Twilight Council got sniped, I guess. The second one. Did it? Yep. Not sure when that happened, but maybe we just missed it somehow. And that's probably why his forge wasn't working for a really long time. It's still not, by the way, continuing to upgrade. He only has plus one armor. Yeah. He's about to be behind a whole set of upgrades. Not usually the norm here um, for Protoss versus Tyrion. You know, with the Chrono Boost, you're able to get those upgrades out a bit faster. Decides to go for charge in terms of, of upgrades here. Uh, not a bad idea. Both Blink and Charge pretty good against all Terran units. Yeah. The Terran army is actually moving towards him in an angle he doesn't expect. He's more concerned about a drop, but this Nexus will have to be canceled. Should be able to fly away with a lot of these Terran units as well. He's got to be so careful, though, against this many Blink Stalkers. He gets the Nexus, but he's losing a ton of units. That was and a Bravo snipe right there. <laughs> that was pretty much a Bravo snipe. And look at this. He's, He's going to get both of these, too. get both, I think. He doesn't have vision. Almost got both. Storm, Storm is on the way. He's got enough units. He's got, he's had that third base for so long that even though he lost all those units, his economy, his production has been off the hook. So he's got still, you know, about even an army supply after sniping a base. And he has the Viking count to now continue to produce Metabox off of two starports. He's in a really good spot, TY that is. This is awkward for Myungshik because also we're about to have ghosts out on the map for his High Templar. I mean, they're popping out right now. See, right when I say it, Observer's like, yeah, <laughs> that's what's happening. This is a problem. Yeah, it's a pretty big problem. It's kind of an issue. Yeah. Vikings out there, maybe looking for War Prisms, but uh, not going to find much. It's going the opposite way. Little does he know. What's in the prism? Just Zealots or are there High Templar in there? Do you know? I, I didn't get a look at that, actually. I don't think he clicked on it, the Observer, so we don't know, but... Yeah, there are two Twilight Counts. Okay, okay, just off camera. Yeah. Was I was right there. all along. <laughs> Cats is a stalker. Every little thing here counts. Okay, just Zealots. No expensive cargo in here. Don't tell the Zealots I said that. <laughs> Wait, don't tell them. Seriously. Yeah. Look at the upgrades here. This is still also a problem. 1-1 one, one upgrades versus just the plus 1 armor. Plus 2 armor almost done. But it's going to be canceled by that plus 2 attack. The zealots are going to go down here. It's going to need more reinforcements to deal with the rest of the zealots that come out. The debris here is still going to protect this base for a while, but it allows TY to use these Vikings against any Colossi that come nearby. And he's got so many ghosts with this too. I would not want to be Myungshik right now. He's going to really have to split his attention here. 
There comes that base, scans up here. And he's gonna get a nice angle. There's the Nexus Cannon. Gets a good EMP on the Colossi, but good storms do push away the Vikings. And that Nexus Cannon just makes it so hard to stay. Every single shot whittles away those Vikings, which are really so important when it comes to approaching. And when it comes to attacking a location like this, you absolutely need to have those. Yeah. Somehow that, <laughs> that uh, what is that? Uh, why can't I think of the, the unit, the, the war person? Okay, wow. Uh, huh. It somehow made its way back into the natural and uh, did a drop. Didn't get much damage, it looked like. But, yeah. uh, did do something. Taking the mid base here is uh, TY as well as Myungshi. They're both moving out, and this is the, the late game point of TVP where economy becomes less important and unit compositions and fighting. You know, these big engagements are oftentimes what decides the entire game. So you need to be really cautious with how he moves this Bioforce. If he gets caught, if he eats some bad storms, he might lose the game. Same to be said Myung Shik. If he gets into a bad angle, gets hit with some EMPs and or Viking volleys on those Colossi, could be a big problem. Oh, these ghosts are exposed, but he baits out a lot of charges with this. And a decent EMP goes down, but how is he going to respond? He's got a witch now. In between the Zealots and the rest of the army, but the Zealots are happy with that. We're going to go over here and force a cancel on this CC. If not, kill it. It's killed, and he's got the back way out here. The rocks were not sealed. Oh, no. Not a good place here for TY. I mean, he was he's he's got a good army, and I liked what he was doing. He's trying to draw the Protoss army out of position, but just losing the ghost is not something he wanted at this point. He's going to try to defend here and go for a big drop. There are no more Protoss upgrades coming out, by the way. Look at how much money he has compared to his gas. Something is wrong. I'm not sure what. Okay, now it now starts a plus one uh, attack. That Archon comes up here to tank a little bit, and the Storms are solid on those Vikings. He blinks forward again. Ghosts are cloaked here, but this is a lot of Protoss army coming up. I think he's going to have to give up this command center again. Yeah, he's going to have to. A huge clump of TY's army is going for a drop right now on four medevacs. He's not able to hold this off. Myungshik, he knows this is on the way. Had an observer over there. What is he going to do to defend here? He has a ton of stalkers, actually. And a cannon, even. He is way, way prepared for this one. Another non-cancel on that base. Uh, every mineral counts. I guess not if you're Myungshik with almost 3,000 to spare, but that storm is everything here. He's got two more storms he could use. Had TY stayed, that would have been a disaster. Yeah. I like the idea to drop all the units and go up that ramp that he killed the rocks at, but still, the storms there were the, the hero. Big move command forward, and uh, takes eats a lot of storms here. He does have a nice concave, and there's no, there's just one Colossi here in the back. Well, it's looking pretty good for this rematch right now from Young Shake, but do do their, or rather, do the uh, Warpins come in right now? Where are they? I'm not sure where the rest of his ar army is, actually. He doesn't have a Warpin point, so I think the Bio will actually clean this up. But look at the supplies. I mean, Young Shake just takes such a great trade here. Despite the situation of the upgrades, and he's he's whittled him down so heavily, he just keeps an eye on this fourth base. His four base versus three base for so long, he's built this huge bank. Minerals don't even mean anything to Myungshik anymore. Yeah, look at this huge warp and a zealot's high templar, two colossi at a time being produced right now. Ty trying to do his best to kite back here, and that he is doing for now. But once the storms come through could be lights out here. Trying to fight here with the SCVs. This is the last stand for TY. Nice splitting against the Storms. Will it be enough? I mean, he's hanging in there, but for how long? These warp ends are just something that eventually he's, he just doesn't have enough to, to deal with it. Basically, uh, Myungshik says money's no issue. I want all the Zealots for every single warp gate cooldown available constantly, non-stop, and occasionally High Templar when I've got the gas. Taking a fifth base now. Fourth command center dejected, lifts and, and goes over to the nine o'clock base. He's hoping to land there. You Scans know, going everywhere. Maybe somehow if he drops it down over there, drops a bunch of mules and gets some mining going, gets some economy going, and Myungshik decides not to attack for a bit. Can T Y come back in this one? He has a decent bio ball, but again, double colossi coming out at a time. It's just the, it's the, the uh, ratios, it's the comps, you know. Yeah. Can he build the right composition? It's more important than the supply of the army. It's more important than the size. Does he have the EMPs where they count? Does he have the Vikings? He has no Vikings. You know? 
This is the this is the issue. He's yeah. lifted his main command center. That's how desperate he is now. To hold this base. If this gets burst down, then he's got basically no options left. Drop it some storms here. Ty is trying to hold on to this base. It goes down to two thirds health. You know, I feel like Myungsik is even playing this a little bit more careful than he has to. He's got like High Templar in the War Prism. He's like doing everything perfectly when yeah. he doesn't even have need to. But uh, here Look comes the army. Here comes the storms from behind. Some more storms drops. on the drop. Oh god, GG. Ty is like, god, I can't even. I don't even <laughs> want to look at this. <laughs> Myungsik, man, with the comeback in the rematch, he takes game one. To be honest, I feel like that confidence you were talking about from getting back yeah. to that win against Solki, I'm feeling it. I'm seeing it. I, I'm seeing it, man. You know, even more so than feeling it. You can see it in his play. He is playing so confidently. Gets he, he changes up his play a bit as well. He gets the blink early. He controls the mid game, does not allow drops to take him out as much. And once he has that control and gets into that third base, fourth base kind of game, that late game, gets all the tech he needs, and he plays it much better than he did in the other games. Very nicely done here by Myung Sheik. T.Y. is going to have to win two in a row if he wants to go on to the next round here. But myung he's looking good. Yep, Catalina, he let it happen. So, you were right, Brennan. We did not have the Catalina ban, so myung is okay with this. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe he banned Foxtrot here. Well, I just I wonder if he's feeling like, okay, big map. They want to just play late game. Colossus, Charge Zealot. Still don't think we're going to see Phoenixes here. But let's see what TY can get done on this map that Koreans consider to be Terran favored. Over here at the 9 o'clock position in the red, it is TY. And down here at 5 o'clock in the blue, it's Myung Shik. A lot of Prime fans coming down today. Wait, one thing I want to say about Prime in general as a team is no matter how well they're doing, whether they are GSTL champions, which they, they have been, they won in Las Vegas against Startail, or they are at the bottom of Pro League in points, their fans still cheer so loud. Yep. They've never changed. They're so faithful. They're so loyal. Gotta love Prime fans. I see, I see you guys. Like, I see the foreign fans. I see you guys on the... Uh, on the um, Reddit with the flare, the team flare. See you guys on TL. See you guys repping the Prime logos on Twitter. You guys are real fans. Yeah. You guys make esports what it is. It's true. Now I'm not just talking about Prime fans, but I mean just the energy I see from Prime fans specifically uh, is quite quite high. No matter how the team is doing. You guys stay with them. Yeah. The best kind of fans are the ones that stick through the team, whether or not they're winning or losing. So you pretty much covered that. You know, even now, kind of going through that kind of eighth place in Pro League stands right now. Give them some time. Who knows? They could go back to their former glory. I mean, Prime didn't do that well in Pro League, but let's be honest, they made a big step up from what they were doing in GSTL the season before. True. Um, let's get back on, on gears here. Let's get back on topic. Myungshik is in the lead right now. He is the prime player. But he's up against a gas first build this time. The first we've seen today. And it looks like we're going to see a uh, a drop out of TY. Let's find out in just a moment here if Myungshik is going to be doing a proxy of his own. <laughs> this game could get pretty crazy, let me tell you. Maybe well, Oracles versus drop could or happen. Or even like DTs versus drop. Because, you know, this would be a weird location to proxy Oracles, right? Because it's not really closer it's like literally equidistant, basically. It's at the natural, so it's, I guess, like maybe even a little bit further away. Yeah. And it's like a, it's like a Maca Stargate or something. <laughs> 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 Let's see what uh, what that probe ends up doing. Is Makes he making the pylon? Here. Yeah, but the SCV might actually see that. That would be he, crazy he's just if he going for the that. scout. Yeah. This is a really smart proxy location. It's the perfect location to proxy gateways or a Twilight Council. And I think we're going to see that Twilight Council. Find out. What? You, oh, what? Stargate oh. at home? Huh? <laughs> oh, you just tricked the audience. <laughs> me, me, and the Korean casters made the same sound at the same time. Just <laughs> like what? Huh? <laughs> like we're like something's being built, but it's not here. What if he makes a Twilight Council now? That would be insane. You know, you're up a game. 
go for something crazy here. It's a oh, best Brennan, of three. What if he makes two gateways there and he does a Void Rail in? Oh my god. <laughs> Let's see what he does. That would be your dream, man. He's going to make a Nexus first. The probe is still over there. It's still over there. He's going to make something. And don't forget, this is again against uh, this crazy gas first build. So Oracle comes out first. As we thought probably would be the case, you know, Void Rays would be kind of crazy. <laughs> this is when, like, the Prime coach Gerard was like, all right, I know this rule in this next in arena, everything gets scouted. He'll scout your pylon, think he's ahead, but you just make the Stargate in the main. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gate number one. Oh, man. Gate number two. Going up over there. I think you were right about this. Not about the Voidery, but about the aggressive Stargate play he with extra gates. He could still make a Voidery after this. Now he's going to maybe want to turn that Oracle around because he doesn't know if there's Widow Mines in there. Okay, he's actually going to use it to harass. No, okay, it's probably Marines. Yeah. Okay, this is not going to be bad here. Let's see how much damage he gets done. That Stargate needs to get back. What's the status on the Nexus Cannon? He's fighting with pros right now. There's nothing to defend here in the main base. Nothing. Did All he in the even see? Oh, no. Oh, there's, there's a Widow Mine. There's a Widow Mine. There's a Widow Mine. It was hidden there. All right. He's doing a lot of damage here. Oh, man. He doesn't have enough energy here for the Nexus Cannon just yet. Does I think not... he's actually just going to fall over and die here. Oh, man. Let's see, though, because that, that Oracle comes out here. Does the Nexus Cannon not at the uh, natural, which is where he probably would have liked to have it. And now this base is almost certainly forfeit. Looks like the Oracle went down to the Widow Mine here. Yeah. And now he's going to lose this Nexus to the bunker. The Hidden Gateways, nothing magical happening over there. Looks like he's going to try to counterattack with them. Might as well just go ahead and warp those units in and walk them. That's what he's doing right now. Three Stalkers warping in over there. This is really going to catch TY off guard, I have to say, but I don't know how effective yeah. it's going to be. Does he have a bunker up over there? Ooh. Not able to snipe the He's probably just like, what are you thinking? You have a second Oracle coming across the map? You have nothing at home, and I've got a Viking. But he really doesn't know about these Stalkers. That's why that Siege Tank is coming out right now. He's like, something could happen. This is what I was talking about earlier. When you make when you make a build like this happen, you've got to get that Siege Tank just to be careful about this counterattack that comes out. Uh, yeah. Because you've got basically no units at home, as you can see. Okay, he's going to come down here. The Oracle could burst, uh, help burst down these Marines, maybe even the Siege Tank. The wall is open. Big mistake here. And here come those Stalkers. This is about to get crazy. There are 11 Marines on the map. Some of them are not here, though. Oh, that Widowmine does more harm than good against the SCV. Is a massacre there. GG. No, just not enough not there. Enough. I thought maybe, you know, you could try. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, it was a cool idea. Definitely, I think, caught TY off guard, but when you're this behind, you've got to do something desperate, and it just didn't even really do anything. Yeah. Well, I expected more. I actually thought it was going to do a little bit more damage than that, but... Yeah. Well, the SCB's got the full surround, too. It was just like, what are you, yeah, you going to do after that happens? I, I feel like the idea was was interesting. It was okay. It was cute. It could have worked if TY was going for something normal, but TY went for the drop on the map, and I don't know. He just didn't have enough back at home. To, to defend against it. Those gates just ended up being pretty irrelevant. Yeah. Well, this is Nimbus, a map that Horos is often banned against Terran, as do Zergs, because at certain spawn locations, drops are so scary on this map. Yeah. We often see, you know, Nimbus Catalina bans coming out of Protoss's, but uh, Gunshik deciding to ban a couple other maps. <laughs> not these two. Gunshik's looking stressed. You can see he's sweating. And it's not just because he's got really long, awesome hair. And he's he's <laughs> clearly stressed out right now. Doesn't have any more gum to chew either. Looks like he's out. Oh, no. But he's going to run out of health soon if he doesn't have his gum. He won the first set. It was a macro game. Set two, he lost out of a, you know, really just didn't have enough to defend. He took a really crazy, weird, risky build. He also, like, added a robo at home because I think he was panicking, like, he's going to know something's wrong. I don't have anything here. I'm going to make a robo or something. Things got nasty, guys. Let's go into game number three on Nimbus to find out which one of these two players is going to join Hero in the round of eight. Down here in the bottom right, in the red, the Terran player, it is T.Y. And the top left in the blue. Young Chick, XKT, current prime. 
And this is the you map know, with the back door expands. Something we didn't talk about, you know, former KT, he's going up against his former teammate. That's T. actually T. such a great point. I can't even believe I didn't yeah. know about that. Just after you said that, I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, TY, KT. So these guys should know each other very well. Very, very well. I almost choked on my water. I was so <laughs> excited about you coming up with this, uh, this connection. Well, this is pretty tense. We're cross spawns. Um, it's a pretty macro-oriented map because of the free backdoor expands. With that Q on the SCVs, you can tell that TY is definitely planning on going for a Nexus first. And we're going to see a gateway opening here from Young Shik. The reason why he makes it at the top of his ramp, which you don't normally see in this matchup, is because it's going to be pretty good against Hellion runbys, which are pretty pe prevalent on this map. You will see occasionally, uh, at least I've seen this, I've watched a lot of games on this map, when the Terran ends up picking this map, or rather, excuse me, the Protoss ends up picking this map against the Terran, uh, especially in the earlier days of the map, usually the Protoss would go for an early Nexus because that's how this map was being played, and the Terrans might just gas first blindly to directly counter that. And now in this case, not only is he not going Nexus first to be safe, but he's also going to have this tight wall in case Hellions come to run in. We've seen a lot of that happen. Um, GSL, for example, and uh, another tournament. So extra safety here. And, you know, the, the thing about this map is really that if you get to the third base, if both players get to the third base, it plays like almost any other map. The drops are kind of a little bit more annoying for Terran in the late game too for Protoss to deal with, but you get your cannons up, you know, you get your sack defense up, you get your warp ends, and it's not going to be the end of the world if drops sneak by you, but uh, it's that mid game that you got to get through as the Protoss on this map. And if you do that, you could play the late game like any other normal, you know, Protoss would, but as a Terran on this map, you just need to be focused on aggression constantly because it's a big map and you don't want that Protoss to get that Fairly free Nexus. Yeah, and look at this. Uh -oh. I, I was watching the build of Young Seek. He goes for uh, Gateway Core and no Nexus. He's getting a bunch of gas, has a forward pylon. He's getting the Warp Gate and the Stalker. Still no Mothership Core here. Oh, uh, he chronos the Stalker too. He really wants to be aggressive. Uh, and let's see what he adds. Okay, it's going to be a Robo. There's a lot of different things this could be from a uh, Warp Prism to an Immortal Bust. This is absolutely not something that TY is going to expect. Now, notice to cross that stalker out just to make sure that no SCV gets in sees no Nexus. Yeah, this is this is pretty crazy here. This is next level, man. This is like Choya Foyu level right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, based on the positioning here, I mean, with the build he's going for, with the stalker out this fast, he would have been able to deny scouting anyway. With how close it is, maybe he's going to get the three guides out, go for Immortals. I, it, it could happen. Could also still be a Warp Prism. Um, it would be kind of weird considering the timing of the Robo. Didn't need to get it that early for a Warp Prism. I think it is going to be Immortals, yep. Yeah, just based on the positioning. And the SCV, it goes for a scout now. It's pretty late. It's going to be denied as well. Stalker's out here way far ahead of time. Oh. Needs to be micro. Sentry, though. Okay. Second Sentry comes out. Sentry is going to allow him to have enough minerals to afford these immortals. Oh, oh that scan! <laughs> that is actually such a read right there. That scan is so money. That is like, that is like you know what? Taking no risks right now. That is just what? unbelievably smart. Like, like I'm actually <laughs> in shock right now. He's like, he's like, no, you know what? Let's be 110% sure because... Who knows? And now he sees this. He even sees the Immortal. He's getting two more bunkers. He might even want to... I don't know, man. He's going to have to get these SCVs here. They're going to be up here on repair duty. This is still going to be tough to hold. He wants to block yeah. here. He's going to have to sack the SCVs to block so he can get that second bunker up. He needs to target the Immortal with his Marines. And so far, he's doing a good job of it. Shields down to 28. And if he has to kill this Debris, there's no way he's getting up there in time. For the bunkers are going to be ready. Two bunkers are up. The third bunker is being started here. TY has a lot of units already. You know, it's still going to be a bit hard to stop here. He's going to try to force field off those SCVs from repairing, but with three bunkers. He's got a lot of force fields. This is going to be tough. He's not even going to wait for the third immortal. He's going to go now. Guardian Shield goes up, and here come the force fields. So much firepower in these bunkers, but first bunker is down. He walks back. The Marines are trapped. Really nicely placed force fields here. He wants that third immortal. It's waddling down right now. 
Three more Zealots coming up, and he's getting a, an Observer for high ground vision, but the bunkers are so well placed, they're so far back, he's not even going to be able he's to poke them another up low one. ground. Yeah. This is what he needs at this moment in his time. He's taking this totally seriously. Here we go once again. He's going to come up here focusing down that first bunker. Really nice forest fields. Gets a lot of the SCVs in the front. And a sick unload to the back to make sure those Marines can get out. Really nicely done here by TY, but he's not out of the woods yet. Trying to control the top of the ramp here. Another bunker about to finish. And Stim, Stim is the clock here for Myunshik. If it's done, he's done. And it looks like right now, TY a bit overconfident. Comes down for a second, but it buys him enough time to get that bunker up. And now he should be able to hold no matter what. He knows it's one base versus two base. He knows he has double mules, and that stim is his key to victory. In fact, he pulls a lot of his SCVs back once that finishes. He knows that he's got so much more burst damage. He can stim the units in the bunker with no consequence. All right, that observer coming in handy here. Yeah. That bunker was a little bit misplaced, but still, can he even go up there without the bunkers in the second when all these uh, Marines start popping out? He's not even gonna need bunkers anymore with the stem he's got. Yeah, two bunkers coming in here. He's just being so safe. Okay, this may be his last chance. Guardian Shield goes up, he force fields again. He's targeting down that leftmost bunker. There's a few Mirars on the right side targeting the Immortal. A great force field there. And the Zealots actually get through. Those bunkers are not ready. But Stim is such a powerful weapon against pushes like this. Good force fields here again. This game is not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. There's so much Protoss army here. But he does get those two bunkers completed. The third one's coming up now again. He's trying to find an angle here. This is so tense. Look at the army supply. Keep a close eye on that, because even though he's got Stim, that's just so much Protoss firepower. And here we go once again. He's trying to get up the ramp once again, but so many SCVs with the repair. The Stim doing a ton of damage as well. The two Marauders in the forwardmost bunker, very, very smart here, trying and, to get that range. And keep in mind that even though this is two base Terran, so many of these SCVs are not mining. He's relying basically on his mules right now. How many SCVs? I'm counting them. He's got like nine SCVs not mining. Those are really the mules that are his economy right now. Pokes left and right on these SCVs. Needs to get that Stalker put in the back. Look at that. Good back there, Stalker. <laughs> All right. Coming up here again now. Force field going down. The SCVs, a lot of them fall here. And so many stims. He's got no medevacs. But keep in mind, we don't see those units' hit points highlighted, but all of those Terran units are very low, including the units in the bunkers. Shortly, he's not going to be able to stim the units even inside the bunkers anymore. Yeah. Look at this. He sees he sees the bunker is exposed. He picks it off. No cancel. Myungshik wants blood, and he's making another immortal. Here I we go. Know. This is not over yet, man. You, everything you're saying is definitely true. He's trying to get a tank out. That would be so, so nice for this. Junkie is still trying to make this happen. He's, He's got, got that so SCV many count so low. It's down to 26 now. He's lost 30 SCVs in this whole game. And that third Immortal is coming up, Brennan. That's what I'm concerned about. When that Immortal gets here, things are going to get pretty hot. But you did mention there is a Siege Tank coming up right now as well. Okay, this is his moment. He's got to do this before the Siege Tank comes out. And if he hesitates, that Siege Tank is just going to blast those sentries into oblivion. They can't take any Siege Tank fire. Great position here on the tank. Way out of firing range. And those sentries step into that side for just a second. He's going to knock so many of them out. He's approaching on the right side, though. Really nice force fields here. And one bunker goes down. He's starting to lift the barracks. The second bunker goes down. Myungshik is trying to make this work. I can't even believe it. He's actually going to come over here and pick oh up his barracks. Gosh. Thinking the seed take look useless. And now Needs look at those force fields. The force fields come in. A huge stim. The SUV is trying to push in here to tank. But so much damage coming out of the Protoss. He warps in a couple more Stalkers, but the tank in the back doing a lot of damage. So, so it looks no like more he just barely will hold this. No more Zealots here. And that Immortal is waddling back. It's tied down by an SCV. And this game was insanely close. But it looks like you're right, Brennan. It looks like this is going to be the end. He's warping in two Stalkers, the saddest Stalkers <laughs> I've ever seen. They're going to come up here and get blasted by the Siege Tank. He's going to have to type out. He's got no Nexus back at home. I cannot believe he almost did it. He almost he did it. He almost did it. He got such a nice position there, killing the barracks as well. But now the Siege Tank repositioning. He's trying to make a Twilight Council. He's Win behind not giving Dark up. Shrine. He's not giving up yet. And you know what? You know, T.Y. probably has a good idea, but he doesn't know for sure. If there's a Nexus over there, he might actually scan. He might actually scan. Uh, to be honest, what else What else should he do? I mean, he's got his SCB count replenished now, back up to 23. He's making more bunkers just to be safe. Then in a second, I feel like a scan wouldn't be a bad choice. Look at this. Trying to pick off this bunker again. Not going to happen this time. He's in range of the Marines. There's that Dark Shrine. <laughs> 
already a missile turret being made. He might want to go ahead and... This is, like, unbelievable. TY sense in this game, the entire game has just been spot on. He sees the the te the um, detector, the turret you were talking about. He may want to make a warp prism. Okay, warp prism on the way. I mean, this is, like, 100% desperation. He's really trying to find a way here. There's that scan I was talking about. He sees there's no nexus there. And here comes that observer to the back. He's checking, checking the saturation, checking to see if there's any turrets there. And you know what? He can actually lift the immortals in there, too. He can actually oh elevate these units. He can <laughs> elevate all these units. No, wait. I don't think this is going to work. It's still, it's too small of an army, but he's not going to have the power of those bunkers, and he's not going to have the siege tanks. Uh-oh. Is he going to oh. see the warp prism? What is this? Where? Oh, oh my god. Oh, the warp prism <laughs> dodges it! He comes around. No way this is going to work. No way, no way. All right. Immortals first. Dropping him in, and he wants to get those DTs out, and he's going to come back for more. Dark Shrine not quite complete yet. He's just going to put the Immortals in first. He's elevatoring in a lot of these units, but again, a ton of Marines coming in here as well okay. as tanks. Time for DTs to protect those Immortals. He needs to keep them in the Warp Prism, though. He needs to unload those units. There he goes. Picks them up at the last second. There's a scan, though, and it looks like this is going to be the end of the game. He has the scan. He saves it. Takes out that Warp Prism and TY holding every all-in possible in this game, I guess with the exception of Void Rays. And now Oracles. She's desperately trying to make it work. It's not gonna work, buddy. I'm sorry, GG. TY will advance along with Hero. What a hold, what a game. TY himself is in shock at that game, man. He is like, I have no idea how I hold that one. Young Sheik, he looks defeated as he was. But I have to say, not even Genius himself would have stayed in that push. <laughs> Hong and Prime would have gone home, okay? Bit by bit would have shook his head and said no. <laughs> Any pro Prime would have looked at this and said, no, absolutely not. I guess I got to make my Dark Shrine earlier instead of trying to make another third Immortal and keep on the push. He's got Stim and he's got four bunkers. I guess I should probably stop, right? But I mean, that was a great hold by TY. Well, I cannot even believe that up against a concave of bunkers with just one observer, the, the careful pushing, the very uh, conservative force fields that we saw there, I mean, he really put on a show. TY, excellent hold, though. TY, the master of holding Protoss all ends. Yeah, definitely easy to say for that one. Well, here we have the results for Group D, guys. A crazy group it was today. Hero took out Sulky for the first time. T-Way takes out Myungshik. Hero takes out T.Y., then Myungshik takes out Sulky. Zerg goes home, no Zergs here, and T.Y. takes Myungshik out in that final match once again. Here's our completed bracket for next week. Yeah, we're gonna have Dark versus T.Y., sick. Super versus Stats, that sounds pretty awesome. Sora versus Zest, could be the finals, and then Hero versus <laughs> Pyong, it's gonna be an awesome PVT. So sad that in each one of these brackets, one player is going to have to go home with his hands empty, not moving on. Yeah, and for you guys who were not here for the first day, the top three players from this bracket will go to China. So that is why we have that third and fourth place match. It does matter. Third place player will be able to go. So even if you do lose in the semifinals, you have a chance. Yep. So top three are making it. Uh, one of the only tournaments where a third place match really matters. Uh, I've, I've said a lot, a lot in the past, but normally I hate third place matches, but in this tournament, it's super important. Uh, you know, obviously it would affect seeding, but um, more important is obviously getting there. You know, it's not like the third place person is going to get as much seeding as the person who wins the whole thing, but you yep. want to get there. Here are the first matches, Dark versus TY and Super versus Stats for next Monday. Make sure you guys are there. It's still at 6 o'clock. Same time as always for this WCG Korea National Final. And man, I just saw TY come out of the booth and go to his coach. He was shaking his head in disbelief and like smirking at the same time. He's like, that was insane. <laughs> that oh man. That all in gave me back all sorts of feels, man. That was just that's the totally. type of build that like totally. You see a build like this, it's it, it creates this idea of the most terrifying player, the most cold-blooded all-inner who will start, he was like about to have to start long distance mining from <laughs> his natural to keep up the fight. And he still made, almost made it work. He almost, almost. made it work. What a great wow. damage as we saw today. Yeah.
We will see you guys next week for the round of eight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Spread the word about this tournament and have a great week.